Hi, cats. Now are you? So you've already watched the last video where I described the impact of low self-esteem. And if you have not already done so, please take a few minutes to write down how having low self-esteem has affected your life. If indeed you believe that you have low self-esteem. So go ahead and pause the video here if you haven't done that. And if you already have, I will continue on um, about the what the article from the Center for Clinical Interventions calls the problem of low self-esteem. Low self-esteem can be part of a current problem. So it can be just a part of something that already exists. So if you're experiencing clinical depression, low self-esteem can be a byproduct of the depressed mood. If you are feeling guilty and worthless all the time, um, having a negative view of yourself, including those feelings of guilt and shame, are very much connected to clinical depression. And here are some of the other symptoms that are common in depressive disorder. Feeling consistently sad, down, depressed, or empty. So it's most of the time and it's either low mood or empty feeling reduced pleasure in activities previously enjoyed or lack of interest in most things okay that's pretty self-explanatory increased or reduced appetite sleep difficulties so either the inability to sleep sleeping more than usual or waking up in the middle of the night and unable to return to sleep. Feeling tired and without energy, so regardless of any amount of sleep that you've had, you're, you're tired and um, listless. Being fidgety and restless, okay, or slowed down compared to your usual speed of doing things. And this is something that is observed by others. Uh, so I know in bipolar depression, the agitated, you know, the fidgety, restless type of depression, um, that's pretty specific to the depressive um, end of the bipolar spectrum, whereas unipolar depression tends to not have that. Um, usually that's more of the, just the extremely slowed down uh, pace and affect and having difficulties concentrating or making decisions. Or you could just be a Libra, <laughs> kidding. Um, having thoughts that you might be better off dead or thinking about hurting yourself. Obviously those are um, relatively common in depression but can happen in other conditions as well. So according to the DSM, if you've experienced five of these symptoms, and it has to include the low mood or the loss of pleasure or interest, and they have to be present on most days for the past two weeks or more, then it's possible that you are clinically depressed according to the DSM. But life isn't regulated by the DSM, so you have to decide for yourself if you feel like there's an underlying clinical depression to deal with. So in that case, uh, there are lots of effective treatments available and I can tell you a few of them. Changing your diet, getting an exercise routine going, a variety of antidepressants, light therapy for seasonal depression, electroconvulsive therapy for uh, moderate to severe depression that doesn't respond to anything else. And I actually get ketamine infusions for my disorder. So that I would say start with that before going to ECT, but 
a lot of people have had great results with ECT and not with the ketamine. So it's up to you. All right, so have you been depressed lately? Have you experienced any of those symptoms described above? And if so, take note of those that have affected you most significantly. So maybe stop the video and take notes. Have you been depressed? Which symptoms have you had? Briefly describe those, the ones that really have affected you the most. And then we'll come back to the video. Okay, so now you've written down the symptoms that may have affected you the most in what could possibly be a depressive disorder or your depression in general, if you have depression. Low self-esteem can be a result of other problems. So it could be a current difficult or stressful life circumstance, and we call that um, situational. So there's such a thing as situational depression where the depressed mood is dependent on something happening or not happening in one's life. So this can be prolonged financial hardship, persistent illness, which may be unrelated to any depression, an accident that's caused some kind of impairment, chronic pain issues. I have, I've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, so I know that one relationship difficulties. So if you've had any divorces, separations, breakups, sort of just walking on eggshells around your partner, that could definitely count. Or a problem situation that is difficult to solve in general. Okay, so sometimes when a problem is experienced over an extended period of time, one can become discouraged and demoralized. And I believe demoralization is actually something that can be found in the DSM, but um, generally I hear demoralization in conjunction with um, problems at work. In any case, more situational rather than a clinical depression. So self-confidence can be undermined and low self-esteem can develop. Experiencing other psychological problems such as panic attacks, chronic worrying, or social phobia can also chip away at a person's self-esteem. All right, so if you have panic attacks or anxiety attacks, if you are a chronic worrier and maybe you have intrusive thoughts, or maybe you feel like if you stop worrying, you're not doing anything about your situation, uh, so any of this or social phobias like social anxiety or even extreme shyness, selective mutism, all this can chip away at a person's self-esteem. So what are your personal circumstances like at the moment and what sorts of difficulties might you be experiencing now? And how long have these been going on for? So take a few minutes to jot these down. And I'm actually going to end the video here. So again, please um, note what your personal circumstances are like at the moment. So these would be all the different situational factors of your life, whether it's work, home life, if you have kids, if you're in school, if you are a kid, you know, so it's going to be different for everyone and what sorts of difficulties might you be experiencing in conjunction with that and how long has it been going on for um, you can just take it kind of circumstance by circumstance and elaborate on how long each problem has been going on for and it does not have to be a minimum of two weeks for it to count as a problem just because in the DSM it has this arbitrary length of time, two weeks associated with a lot of the depressive categories. Okay, so this is about you. It's not about insurance reimbursement, which is what the DSM codes are. I mean, it's about treatment too, of course, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Okay. All right, cats, meow. We'll be back soon. All right.
take care.